The London Blitz started 80 years ago, more or less to the day. And it was an effort by the Nazi government of Germany to break both the morale and the industrial capacity of Britain, to make it want to just surrender and get out of the war. And Chelsea was particularly vulnerable because of its position by the river. People knew where they were if they were flying up the river. They knew where the docks were, they knew where the mainline stations were, they knew where the power plants were. And all over Chelsea, we see that pattern. Planes flying up the river and then branching off to find specific targets. And it's why Chelsea was so badly hit. But on a personal level, what I'd really like you to remember as we walk around is how terrifying this must have been for the residents. Because I know as a historian, we know from the history books, that this was going to finish in, in around May 1941. But night after night, the terror of hearing engines over your residence, night after night wondering if it was going to be you, living with that kind of stress, that's something we understand much better, the damage that that does. Even if by chance your home isn't damaged, your psyche is damaged. So let's bear that in mind as we track the path, the path of the bombers around Chelsea. V1 rockets were especially terrifying, not just because they were flying bombs, uh, they had no pilots, they were fired almost at random in the direction of London, they travelled very fast and they had an enormous explosive payload. But as all Londoners came to know, what was most terrifying about them was that you could hear them. And then between four and six seconds before they were due to land and explode, they went quiet and it gave you not nearly enough time to try and run to safety. And that's exactly what happened on the 3rd of July, 1944. At 10 to eight in the morning, almost 100 US service personnel were out on the street, climbing into six by six lorries that were going to take them to offices and depots all over and around London, where they were continuing to work on the D-Day advance as it moved through Northern France towards Germany. They were in bus queues, effectively. They were climbing up into lorries where some of them were already sitting, packed in for the journey ahead. And when the V1 rocket hit, they had no time to scramble out. The lorries themselves were thrown up into the air by the force of the blast and everyone was killed inside. The blast itself killed everyone who was still in the street and it remains the single greatest loss of US military life on the UK mainland. I brought you here to Dove House Green this is a little patch of green just off the King's Road where many people come and eat their lunch. And I hope that they notice that on the wall is a simple memorial to the 457 residents of Chelsea who lost their lives during the Blitz. When you look at that very simple memorial, we should also remember that the Blitz isn't over for the residents of Chelsea in May 1941 that it is going to go on for the remainder of the war. The V1s, the V2s, and in February 1944, bombing so hard they became known as the Little Blitz. Just up the road from here, at the corner of Edith Grove and the King's Road, were Guinness Trust buildings. And in February, over 60 people were killed in their homes on one night during the Little Blitz. It's a striking memorial, it's very small, but it uses the same font that they use on the gravestones in France for everyone lost during the First World War. And this at the end of the day is Chelsea. It's an artistic borough, and they've drawn on the Picasso image of the dove carrying an olive branch. So all in all, I think this is a very Chelsea memorial. I'm standing outside the Chelsea fire station. There's been a fire station here on the King's Road in Chelsea for most of the 20th century. 
It was particularly busy and a dangerous place to work during the Blitz in 1940 and 41 and the, any subsequent bombing in the area. The bombs caused huge fires and it was up to the firemen to dash out of this fire station, hope that their water supply was still connected and work sometimes all night to put out the fires. There's a memorial plaque outside the Chelsea fire station which shows the lives of all the firemen who not only lost their lives in the Second World War, but who've also paid the ultimate sacrifice in the decades since then. So we're here at the Royal Hospital Chelsea. This is the other great masterpiece by the architect Christopher Wren, built in the 17th century after the restoration of the English monarchy. Because the Royal Hospital is right on the edge of the river, it was a target that was easy to define. It was a big building, it had big grounds, and for any bomb aimer in a German aircraft, the, the thought of such a tempting target was probably too much to bear. If the staff and in-pensioners at the Royal Hospital at Chelsea thought that they had got off relatively lightly from the blitz that raged across London and Chelsea uh, from 1940 to 1941, unfortunately the events of the 16th of April 1941 were to prove their very worst fears. At 11 o'clock at night, several parachute bombs, they were called landmines at the time, but they were large bombs that exploded when they hit the ground, made direct hits at the Royal Hospital. And this is an extract from a war diary kept from a member of staff that tells of the fear and the terror and the challenges of moving the pensioners to safety. Clouds of dust filled the air, debris fell within 300 yard radius of the infirmary, and the east wing of the hospital was completely destroyed, a large crater occupying the site. The remainder of the infirmary was badly damaged, the roof being removed, though luckily an air raid shelter remained intact. Windows were broken all over the Royal Hospital. Those in the bombed wing were killed outright. They included in-pensioners Rattray, Jackson, Johnson, Sullivan, McGovern, Pope, Cameron and West. And also Sister Taylor, Nurse Ward and Ward Master Hutchins Sister McMullen and Sister Nicholson, who were also sheltering under the stairs, were killed. At the outset, work was hampered by a fire, which quickly attained quite big proportions and might have acted as a target. Several tank pumps arrived, some being sent round via the tight street entrance. The fire was got under control after about half an hour. Meanwhile, the removal of patients had begun. And I'm telling you this from the crater left behind by one of those bombs. Of course, it isn't a crater now. We were able to use the space that had been cleared to create today's National Army Museum, where the extraordinary commemoration of these events is taking place as part of the Chelsea History Festival. Thank you so much for joining us. Mm -hmm.